Rishi Sunak. Yeah. Thank you. Madam Deputy Speaker, the average commute into London begins 40 miles outside of this city. If we could make that the case for Manchester, we could create an urban network with a population larger than New York and a GDP the size of Sweden. That is the scale of the prize for getting Northern transport right. So tonight, Madam Deputy Speaker, I would like to make three quick points. First, I want to celebrate the powerhouse that the North already is. Second, I would like to talk about the role that transport will play in shaping the North's future. And lastly, I want to suggest a few key projects that will ensure the future is bright. When I hear the phrase Northern powerhouse, I must admit my heart sometimes sinks because I know that too often I'm about to hear a story of the past, the North as the land of the spinning jenny, or I'm to be told about a far too distant future of hyperloops across the Yorkshire Dales. But instead of talking about the past or the far future, let us not forget today that Britain's 16 million Northerners are already the nation's economic engine. Last year, it was not London or the South East which saw the highest growth, but the North West. Thanks to Nissan Sunderland car plant, Britain is, for the first time since England won the World Cup, producing more cars than the French. Off Yorkshire's east coast, hull-made turbines are creating the world's largest offshore wind farm. In science, the North's 29 universities, including world-class institutions like Durham, York and Newcastle, are at the forefront of our cutting-edge research. And in Manchester United, the North is home to the most successful sporting franchise anywhere in the world. But in the area of transport, we are still selling the North's potential short. The cities and towns of the North are individually strong, but collectively not strong enough. The only way to get the North to punch beyond the collective sum of its parts is to connect those parts up. And that is why better transport is key to unlocking the North's true potential. Today, converted buses, known as pacer trains, a technology phased out more than 12 years ago by Iran's National Railway, are still in use across the North. Today, it is quicker to travel 283 miles from London to Paris than it is to do less than half that distance between Hull and Liverpool. And today, too often bright, young, entrepreneurial minds forged in northern schools and universities find it easier to come 200 miles to London to find a job than to look in a northern city just 40 miles away. But it doesn't have to be like this. After all, the distance between Manchester and Leeds is shorter than the length of the London Underground Central Line. And the government, to their credit, I believe recognises the need for investment. And in my own constituency, upgrades to the A1 and the A66 are welcome. But there is much more to do. The Northern Powerhouse is a wonderful phrase, but the people of Northern England deserve more than a slogan. They need action. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, how do we make the aspiration a reality? There is no doubt that over successive <laughs> governments, there has been a substantial funding gap between London transport and Northern transport. Would you give away on that point? Yes, of course. I asked the question of the Honourable Lady opposite, but does he agree that this lack of investment has been for generations? This is yeah. not a party political mm -hmm. issue. It should be something we work cross-party on to deliver the solutions we all know we need. Well, I thank my honourable friend from Thurston Moulton for the intervention. He, I know, has done excellent work analysing these numbers, and I completely agree with the point that he makes. It is multi-generational. Well, the point is, from here, that gap needs to start closing. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, London has Crossrail, the Midlands are getting HS2, now we in the North need the government to back Northern Powerhouse Rail. The government's £300 million down payment is certainly welcome, but we will need a lot more to show the people of the North that the government means business. Thirdly, in my own area, the new Tees Valley Mayor has campaigned to upgrade Darlington Station to vastly improve its capacity and connectivity. It is an excellent proposal, and the government should get behind it. Yes. Fourthly, from Teesside to Merseyside, 
From Tyneside to the Humber, one of the North's many strengths are its great ports. <clears throat> As I set out last year, after we leave the EU, we should create a new generation of US-style free ports to turbocharge yeah, manufacturing yeah, yeah, yeah. trade and employment in our great northern port cities. And finally, we must make sure that the rural north is not left behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Advances like autonomous vehicles will have their biggest impact in yeah, sparse yeah. rural areas like mine. For example, allowing elderly constituents to access distant health services more easily, or stimulating our local economy by allowing people to head off to the pub without worrying who is driving them home. Mm. Madam Deputy Speaker, it may seem strange to hear all of this from a boy born in Southampton, <laughs> but I am deeply proud to now call the North my home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as long as I have voice in this house, I will speak up loudly and forcefully for my home's bright future and for an economy that, with the right investment, can be the powerhouse not just of Britain but of the world. Yeah.